Hello everyone and welcome to the sixth part of our video series. I'll be sharing classical music selections in the form of albums and the occasional film. This I hope will help a new listener have a great launching pad to set off on. If you're already a classical music fan, then I hope you find many hidden gems within our selections. So let's get started. Our first album selection for today is titled Umbra My Few. G.F. Handel's Airs and Arias from Selected Operas and it features Andrea Shaw accompanied by the Academy for Alte Music Berlin and it was released on Harmonia Mundi in 1999. On this great album here, Andrea Shaw sings very beautiful and popular Airs and Arias from Selected Handel Operas. The works here include works from Circe, Alcina, Rodelinda and Giulio Cesare. Andrea Scholl is a wonderful countertenor who has played a leading role in the resurgence of popularity in countertenors. So let's talk a little bit about countertenors. What is a countertenor? A countertenor is a male adult singer that sings in the highest register possible for a male. The female equivalents would be a mezzo-soprano alto range. A countertenor is different from a man singing in falsetto. So what's the difference? For me, the easiest way to think about it is a countertenor sings with the vocal cords closed and produces a richer, heavier sound. A falsetto singer sings with the vocal cords mostly open and the sound is thinner and breathier. When these works were written by Handel, during his time in the Baroque era, these works were actually written for men who were called castratis. And this is based on a very unfortunate history where young boys were castrated before they reached puberty so they could retain their voices. It's a terrible practice that didn't stop actually until 1903, if you can imagine. So why should you listen to this album? Because it has a fantastic countertenor, Andrea Shaw. You have the Academy for Alter Music Berlin, which always produces really great work. And the selection here is wonderful. Our second album selection for today is called Songs for William Shakespeare. This is a wonderful album here. It's a live recording of music that was either featured in William Shakespeare plays or songs that he actually wrote himself. And it features the beautiful soprano Sarah Stowe and she's accompanied by multi-instrumentalists Matthew Spring and Sharon Lindo. This album was released on a label called The Gift of Music in the year 2000. I find this album to be a hidden gem for so many reasons. Firstly, the soprano Sarah Stowe has a beautiful crystal clear voice and the poetry comes across very clearly and beautifully. She had actually studied piano and harpiscord before focusing on being a vocalist. She is accompanied here by Matthew Spring, who she has been collaborating with for over 20 years. On this album, he plays the lutes, sitan and hurdy-gurdy. Also featured is violinist Sharon Lindo. Sharon Lindo plays the Renaissance violin, recorder, pipe and tabba. I highly recommend this album. So it's songs for William Shakespeare. It has 29 songs on it, beautifully covered by Sarah Stowe, the soprano, Matthew Spring and Sharon Lindo, the instrumentalist. And it was released on the label The Gift of Music in the year 2000. Our third album selection for today is a film soundtrack. And this soundtrack is for the movie Immortal Beloved. So this album here features the London Symphony Orchestra they are conducted by the late great Sir George Schulte and it features performers such as the great pianist Emmanuel Axe and the legendary cellist Yo-Yo Ma. This was released on Sunny in 1994. An interesting thing is Yo-Yo Ma and Emmanuel Axe have done many recordings together. Their latest is a recording once again of Beethoven and it also features Leonidas Cavacos on the violin. So although this album doesn't feature the pieces in full, I would still recommend it because it features these wonderful performers and it sounds wonderful. So it's Immortal Beloved and it was released on Sunny Classical in 1994. 
Our fourth album selection for today takes us into the legendary artist category of this series. And our legendary artist for today is the wonderful pianist Glenn Gould. So this album here is Glenn Gould, A State of Wonder, The Complete Goldberg Variations. The first recording was done in 1955 and then the second in 1981. So the album features both CDs on it separately. The 1955 version was the recording that made Glenn Gould an international superstar. And the 1981 version was done just a year before he passed away. Personally, I love the 1981 version. I find it a bit slower and more emotionally played. Glenn Gould was born in Toronto, Canada in 1932. He was an only child whose parents loved music themselves. And at 10 years old, he entered into the Royal Conservatory of Music in Toronto. One of his teachers was Alberto Guerrero, and he played a pivotal role in helping Glenn Gould develop his playing technique. Glenn Gould had a back injury as a child, and this prompted his father to craft an adjustable high chair for him. He went on to use the chair all through his life. The chair is such a part of his legend that it sits in a glass case in a museum. In 1960, Glenn Gould made his first appearance on American TV on CBS. They had a show called Ford Presents and he played Bach's keyboard concerto number no. one in D minor. He was accompanied by the New York Philharmonic and conducted by the late great Leonard Bernstein. His last public concert was in 1964. Now on YouTube, there's a channel called Ants PDC, and they actually feature this 1960 performance from CBS. If you can watch this on YouTube, this performance, I highly recommend you do. And this sort of leads us into our fifth album selection, which is also Glenn Gould. So this features the keyboard concerto number no. one in D minor, again, so this was actually recorded before Glenn Gould did the TV appearance with Leonard Bernstein. Glenn Gould passed away in 1982, two days after his 50th birthday following a stroke. Something I find interesting, when NASA sent the Voyager spacecraft out into space, it sent it along with a record called a golden record. And this is a gold-plated record that has uranium incorporated into it and it was sent out so just in case there's any extraterrestrial life out there and they wanted to have some idea um, about our culture as a humanity they would have this record and through the degradation of the uranium they would know how far away they are from us on earth and how long ago the record was sent so on this record you have bits of music from all over the world and different genres of music Glenn Gould's work, his back recordings are featured on this album as well. And I think that's a beautiful dedication and thank you to an artist who really invested so much of himself into making beautiful music for us to enjoy. Our sixth and final album selection for today takes us into the Living Artist to Know category. And our Living Artist to Know for today is the wonderful Bobby McFerrin. On this unique and totally original album recording, you have 13 tracks featuring Bobby McFerrin doing the vocal improvisations and polyphonic singing that have made him legendary in both the classical and jazz music worlds. So he's featured here alongside his friend, Yoyoma, the cellist. Some of the pieces featured on this album are Vivaldi's Andante, Rimsky Korsakov's Flight of the Bumblebee, and uh, Bach's Air. Listening to this wonderful album, there were several times when I couldn't actually make out if I was listening to Bobby McFerrin or an instrument, making the otherworldly beautiful sounds I was hearing. So a little bit about Bobby McFerrin. Bobby McFerrin is actually Bobby McFerrin Jr. and he was born in New York in the year 1950 to Robert McFerrin who is the first African-American man to sing at the Metropolitan Opera. His father was a respected baritone. Bobby McFerrin's mother, Sarah McFerrin, was a distinguished lyrical soprano and teacher. 
Bobby McFerrin spent years developing his own unique vocal style before releasing his self-titled album, Bobby McFerrin, in 1982. In 1988, he had the big hit, Don't Worry, Be Happy. To date, Bobby McFerrin has won 10 Grammy Awards for his work in world music, reggae, jazz, and the classical music world. We've come to the end of our video series for today. I hope you've enjoyed my selections. I've certainly enjoyed sharing them with you. Please subscribe to my channel. If you've listened to any of the albums that I feature today, please leave a comment in the commentary section and let others know what you feel about them. I look forward to seeing you on my next video and until then, stay well.